RabbitMQ is a popular open source message broker, especially among c -sharp developers who are creating microservices or even just disconnected systems that follow the pub sub pattern. Let's see how to get RabbitMQ installed and running for development in just a couple of minutes in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the answer to the question, how do I use this? This is why I created a 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into setting up RabbitMQ for development. Now we're gonna use Docker for this video because this is the absolute best way to use RabbitMQ in development. You're gonna see why in just a few minutes. Now I have Docker desktop installed and I'm using the, the Linux version of this. That's the, the most common way of using Docker desktop is using the Linux variant. I am on Windows, but it runs um, Linux containers. So let's, there's nothing, there's no containers installed. There are images um, that I've downloaded, but that's just to speed things up. So let's go ahead and install RabbitMQ. And really install is not quite the right word, but what we're gonna do is we're going to run a Docker container that has RabbitMQ in it. And the benefit there is that because it's running in a container, we can stop it, we can delete it, we can start over, we can you know, not have it interact with the rest of our computer so it won't have problems of, of configuration and all the rest, all that's done for us. So we're gonna say docker run and dash D we're gonna start with. And what this does is we run this container, it's going to make sure we're in disconnected mode, which means we can close out this terminal and it will still run the container. Now, if at this point you're glazing over and saying, Tim, I have no clue what Docker images and containers and all the rest are, I do have a video that covers introduction to Docker that will give you a great introduction to help you understand that Docker is an amazing tool for making you faster in your development loop, especially for things like this. So we're gonna run docker run dash D for disconnected. We're gonna say dash dash host name and say RMQ for RabbitMQ. The host name is the server name that RabbitMQ will have. And we'll see that in a little bit. So next up, is the dash dash name. And this is the Docker container name. So when it shows up in this list over here, we wanna be able to differentiate it. You don't have to give it a name, but that's gonna give you a random name that you're not gonna know what that container really does. So we give it a more descriptive name. So how about rabbit dash server? And then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna map two different ports. The first port is going to be port 8080. We're gonna map that to 15672. So when you map ports, you'd say dash P, and this first number, this 8080, is what you want it to, to interact with it on in your computer. And then the 15672 is inside the container. So inside the container, it says, hey, this is port 15672, but on your computer, you can change that port number if you want. You don't have to. You can have the same port number, but sometimes you have it step on toes and you don't want to do that. So you, you map it to a different port. Or in this case, this is the management server web address. So it listens on port 15,672, which I find hard to remember, but port 8080 is usually open and it's a pretty simple one to remember. So I'm going to use that instead. And the second port we're going to map we're gonna say 5672, and we're gonna map that to 5672. And let's um, expand this window out so you can see this whole command here. And this is just gonna map that the internal port to the external port on your machine, um, and it will be the same port. Now I say external port, I mean the port for your local host. It won't go out onto your network. Like so someone else could not access this port, unless you punched a hole in your firewall. All right, and then the final bit is to say rabbit MQ colon three dash management. Let's, we'll shrink it down a little bit so you can see it on one like that. So what this does, is it says, hey, this is the image I wanna build or run this container off of. 
So RabbitMQ has created a few different containers, I'm sorry, a few different images to create containers out of. And this one is the, the latest version of RabbitMQ with the management systems already installed in it. So this has everything we need. So we hit enter and we're done. So now we have a running image on my computer of RabbitMQ. Now I talked for quite a bit to explain the different bits, but really you just run this line right here and you have RabbitMQ installed. Now for you, you'll probably download some images that will take a little bit of time, but we're done. So let's go over to our browser and say localhost colon 8080. That's that management URL. And it says, hey, RabbitMQ. And we've already got to log into a site. The default is guest and the password is guest as well. And this is my newly installed RabbitMQ server in all its glory. So you have RabbitMQ version 3.11.8 and Erlang version 25.2.2. And notice it says rabbit at RMQ. That was the name, let's go back over here. That was the host name we specified. So that's where it's it's pulling that from. So that's the, the uh, server name. So with that, we now have RabbitMQ installed on our machine, ready to run. And when we're done, if we say, you know what? I don't really want to use this anymore. I think I'm done. Come over here and say, delete. And now if we were to go back to this page, we can refresh it and it's gonna time out because it's gone. So it's gone, it's done. And I say, wait, no, I want that back. Okay, it's back. And now we can refresh this page. Let's get rid of the that URL there. And there we go, we're back in. So it just takes that little bit in order to get us back up and running. It's very quick. That's why I love Docker. That's why I love um, this setup because it makes life a whole lot easier to use these tools locally for testing purposes before you use them in production. And of course they're set up with more, more complexity than that in production. But this is all it takes to get Docker to run RabbitMQ locally for your testing purposes. Now, you may be saying, well, Tim, I need to know how to use RabbitMQ with C-sharp, not just how to install it and run it. And never fear, I've got a video coming up very soon about uh, introduction to RabbitMQ and how to use that with C-sharp for things like microservices or just following the pub sub pattern or whatever else you need to do with RabbitMQ. It's a great tool. Um, there are alternatives, for example, um, there's Azure Service Bus and other things as well that you can use in, you know, if you want to use it instead, but this will give you a good idea of how to use this idea of a message broker in your application. The first step though, is to get it running locally so you can test things out without breaking anything in production or even your centralized dev server. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this was, was helpful and useful. Let me know down, down in the comments if you use RabbitMQ or what you wanna see in that next video.